Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, March 29th. Uh, it's a little blustery up here on the top of Mount Sugarloaf today. So um, today we've got uh, at seven o'clock, we've got a discussion and an update on our Riverside Park. But uh, before that, we've got a film permit application to discuss, a sewer connection, um, a discussion about an authorization for early voting, and then anything else that we can squeeze in before our Riverside Park presentation. So let, without ado, let's hop down to the minutes from March 22nd. I will make a motion on the minutes. All right. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor of the minutes from March 22nd? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, so now we've got our film permit application, Jeff. Yeah. And we have... Joe Paisecki, sorry if I'm butchering it. Yeah, how are you, Joe? Yeah, you're on mute. There we go. There we go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, how are we doing? Happens all the time. That was that was, actually that was pretty close. PS PS Joe Piasecki. Yeah. Um. So thank you very much for uh, the invitation. Uh, we actually uh, were in town uh, a couple of years ago for the filming of um defending jacob we we were in town for some driving scenes um so i work uh in massachusetts i'm usually subcontracted by the film companies when they come in to do all the location scouting and the location management uh for the logistics and uh, this particular project is uh is for um is possible productions is the company producing a tv show for showtime um, and the current name of the, uh, of the TV show is called Marble. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get into too many of the details uh, regarding uh, the, you know, the, um, the plot of the story, but I've been telling people if you Google Showtime and Marble, uh, you can get uh, a bunch of information um, on, um, online from that. I just, uh, they want me to kind of stay as quiet as possible when it comes That's to the right. actual plot of the show. We get um, that. But uh, we are... Yeah, we're uh, well. We're back again. We're filming. Uh, we're filming the entire show in Massachusetts, uh, out in Western Mass, uh, several different uh, towns. Uh, we um, we were looking for a highway to use as a uh, filming location for a. Uh, we have a semi truck driving scene where we have this tractor trailer that uh, in in the TV show is driving up and down a uh, highway. So. We were actually already in town. Like I said, we did some driving scenes a few years back. Uh, so we came back to Sunderland. We took the director uh, for a drive around and uh, we found Amherst Road uh, sort of had the best look for what we were going for. For this is to, it's, it's actually, uh, the request would be to uh, shut down Amherst Road for the section uh, between North Main Street and old Amherst Road. And the thought would be um, the timing, time-wise, it would be probably 7 p.m. until about 3 a.m. Uh, where the first couple hours would probably be more for setup. Once we, once we have, uh, you know, we lose light, we have uh, dark and it's dark enough to film, probably around nine o'clock, we'll start filming and uh, hopefully be done by three. Our, our hope is that we film from nine until midnight, but we're giving, uh, giving ourselves a little bit more time on the, on the back end just to, just to finish. So um, the thought would be uh, once we start the closure that we would use old Amherst road as the detour route for that, uh, just to get around that short, uh, that short section. Yep. Um, okay. So that's that's the thought. The um, so for the most part, uh, what we would plan on doing, I, I do know I, I did try to stop by um, as many of the businesses as possible. It looks like I have a list here of about uh, 13 businesses. I think for the most part, the, the bigger ones on my um, uh, for me are the restaurants uh, on the street. 
Um, I know uh, I did stop by, I spoke to Darlene and Pete uh, over at Sugarloaf uh, Frosty. Um, we do want to use a few of these properties, uh, particularly the uh, restaurants as staging locations. So hopefully we can work out a deal where, um, you know, we can put our lighting and our staging uh, in some of these restaurants where we could also provide compensation so there wouldn't, wouldn't be any uh, loss in business. Um, we would be there to um, sort of make up for that. Um, so that's the thought when it comes to the, the few restaurants that are on the street. Um, I don't think, uh, so I, I did stop by uh, this Bridgeside Grill. Um, I haven't spoke, spoken with anybody directly there yet. Um, my thought would be, in, in all honesty, I, I, we may, there may be a way that we can put up some signage uh, on each end of the closure. And in fact, I, we do want to put up signage that at least says um, local traffic or, or residents only. Um, so the thought would be we, cre we create, we detour everybody else. Uh, on Old Amherst Road, but at least the people that need to get down. Uh, there are obviously a few homes down there, a handful of houses. There's also Garage Road and North, uh, North uh, Silver Lane. Um, I, I'm sure the residents with enough notice, um, I, my thought would be we, we'd probably want to flyer and put some notice out uh, right to those houses on that side street and these side streets, just so that people will have, um, you know, enough notice in advance to know what the closure is and that way they know the street to sort of go around if they are out um you know between the times seven to three in the morning um so we will do the the uh, proper outreach to reach out to the neighborhood to, to the businesses and we will it, it won't when we say closure obviously um we'll have Sunderland police present um uh, we'll allow uh, neighbors to come in through that sort of we call it a soft closure and then at least say okay I live you know I live down the street I need to get down and we'll have we're not always filming much of what we do is just set up. So between shots, we can always let a resident down uh, that needs to get down. So that's how we would um, take care of that situation. Um, so that's really the first, uh, the first part of that. I think the second request, which uh, was not on the application, but just came up. Um, we have a scene where one of the actors is, is also running the, the semi truck pulls over and we have an actor, um, running down the street as well and we have uh some simulated gunfire in the scene as well so i think um there was some talk on our end whether or not we wanted to actually have the sound effect for that or not and um like they usually do for active purposes they do want to create that simulated gunfire um which would be quarter la uh, quarter rounds um quarter loads and it would be um sort of loud obviously but that would not be for the entire time it would only be for a short i would say an hour stretch between that time um that we're doing the filming we just right now i don't have an exact schedule on what time that would be it really all falls on the uh, the uh, actor availability when they decide to do um the particular scene at night but um those are the two big points i think the closure and that uh, simulated gunfire that i think people should be aware of um and i just wanted to see if if anybody had any questions um, so we probably need to update the permit. I'm thinking, Jeff, for that piece of it, right? Yeah. In addition, just so it's on there, and so we've got that communicated. Um, yeah, I, I apologize. This was uh, sort of just uh, brought up and finalized, and I, and I yep. did want to. I did want to make, uh, you know, obviously in this meeting and um, make that announcement, uh, seeing as though it was something we would like to do. So we definitely um, could update that permit or um, however you want to go about that. But again, I wanted everybody to be aware of the, the, the entire scope of the, the project. Okay. Um, would, it be, would it be of any help to use our sign too, maybe just to note like a closure during that time down there? Mobile sign, maybe? We could think about that. We could certainly, I'm, uh, I'm, I, uh, I also work with um, a couple of the, um, the road safety um, companies, Visi Flash and Road Safe. Um, I'm actually going to bring in some highway signs, uh, some of those official uh, road closure signs. I think also um, a couple of one-way signs. So people that are exiting Garage Road and nor North Silver Lane uh, will, will at least be able to exit. They'll be able to exit onto, um, depending on which side of, of Garage Road they're, they're exiting, 
um, onto Amherst Road. They won't have to turn around and leave. They can actually make that left or right to leave, um, yeah. uh, you know, via Amherst Road. Okay. Um, but yes, uh, if you have the, uh, that would be great. If you had a sign that we could post in, days in advance, um, we've done that before. That would that would be a huge help. Yeah, I don't certainly. know. I don't know if it's still done, but we do have like a, a mobile sign that we'll use for different message boards and things like that. So one of the LED ones. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be so great. Yep, yep. Maybe we, that might we've, help. And we've rented those. If we had to supplement that as well, um, that's something that we do uh, with with those rental companies. So we could we could either uh, rent that from you for from the town, or if we even need to supplement that with if there was. Um, uh, a need for a couple more signs in the area. We could also bring a couple more in just to get the notice out to residents, maybe even on a couple of those side streets. So people are aware of the filming that way okay. as well. Um, no other questions from anybody, right? Everybody seemed to be uh, good. The police chief and Oh, God, Scott. So two questions, Joe, thanks for thinking of Sunderland again. It's nice to have you back. Thank um, you. The first question is uh, scheduling. Does this turn into a rain date, weather date? Uh, do we need a particularly beautifully sunset sky for this, or is this just that date and go? It, it is night. Uh, right now, they're telling me, and as you know, I mean, the film business is funny. Uh, it's I, the weather. I, I hear you, man. It just came up with the, with the gun. Yeah. Um, I mean, right now, the good thing is it's, it is night, so... Um, a lot of times when it does come to night, uh, they will just go with it. And, and I believe this is not uh, something that the continuity has to work out. So right now, I believe they might be able to do it uh, in the rain. The only thing that I foresee happening is we have uh, we will be filming uh, f during the day at the Wait Me Diner. So I have to check to see if that work is affected by the rain then it, it, there may be a possibility of, of the, um, the night work being affected. But if, if that's the case, we need a full, uh, we will need a full, uh, a full night. So if that Friday for some reason didn't work out, um, we would have to scrap it. We would have to go to shoot another scene somewhere else, maybe on our sound stage. Um, and then we would have to plan this for, you know, another, another Friday down the line, but I can get, I can definitely get that answer for you. But right now they're hoping to just go forward with it. Okay. And so lead, lead time would be decision a couple days in advance, roll out to the public. Yeah. Yeah. You, I'll be honest. Usually when it comes to the weather, um, if they do decide to not go, I mean, the biggest part of this, I mean, if it's just a drizzle, I think they're going to go. But if we if we have, you know, high winds and it's going to be, you know, thunder and lightning, we can't okay. shoot in that. So um, right. it would be it would be a matter of because we do have we will have another part of this is um, along with renting out some of these parking lots on the street. We will have lighting lifts. So we will have lifts that go, you know, 80 feet in the air with lights to light it up the road and so we will be a presence but you know if we have a thunder and lightning storm we can't bring you know safety yeah. wise we cannot put those lifts up in the air so you know we would have to cancel so we would probably make that call 24 hours in advance um, they usually don't do it any more than a day so we would we would rush to let the public know it's been canceled and we, would, uh, we would we would want to move forward for uh maybe the following week or uh following next couple of weeks great thank you joe that's the only question i have mr chair Sure. Thanks. Um, all right. So I guess just get that. Uh, we'll just get the additional add onto the permit, and then uh, sure. I think we should be all set, right, Jeff? Yeah. The, our... the permit included the use of the prop gun. It didn't say anything about the noise, so I don't okay. know. Um, Maybe just a heads up to the chief, just an FYI, you know. Yeah. I think yeah, I know about it, that's all. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely. I mean. Uh, yeah, first and foremost, I mean, I um, I will be talking to him about that because we'll want to have uh, we'll want to have somebody you know multiple offices obviously with us and um, right. I, I I would hope to meet with the chief in person to um, I want to kind of have a side meeting I think with the chief to sort of go over the the diagrams that I have and just make sure we're all on the right. same page for where we feel details should be placed so I I will contact the the chief to have a, a separate side meeting uh, with him about without about the details. Okay. All right, great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Appreciate right. it. It's good to be back. Good, right. good. Yeah. good to have to you. Authorize. All right. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor of uh, authorization of the filming permit? 
Hi. Hi. All thanks, right. Joe. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Good, Good to luck. See you. Have a great night. Thanks, you too. Thank you very much. All right. Bye now. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully, we can squeeze in our sewer connection and maybe our authorization for early voting before seven. And let's see. I thought we had. Yep, there you go. Okay, you're up there. Are you all set there, Daniel? How are you? I'm doing well. All right. <clears throat> so this is sort of a continuation from our last meeting on the permit, right? We've got, uh, we're all set with a design, right, Jeff? Yep. <clears throat> Wastewater treatment plan and, and highway both reviewed it and we're yep. good with the plan. Um, so. Okay. Um, so all we have left to discuss on this is, um, for this piece is the cost, right? The fee, yep. Yep, okay. And um, so uh, looking over it, probably um, just cover the, uh, like the difference between the newer permit and then what you paid on the old one, I think would probably, what was the, do we have the amounts for the new versus the old? Yeah, the, the current fee is 700 and uh, Mr. Olenek previously paid 300, right. I think, in the, the original time, first time. Okay, all right. So just the difference, I think, you know, it wouldn't make sense to do a full full charge again, obviously. So in that case. <clears throat> I can support that. Any uh, Any questions on that at all? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll get it done uh, a little sooner this time, and everything will work out for you. So we're hoping. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. Yeah, I, I hope I don't have to wait as long as I did the last time. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I don't think there's. Let's see. I think so. That we're probably all set with the permit piece of itself, right? Other so the that, the fixture schedule just needs to be current. And I think Danny, oh. you had mentioned that that it was going to be. Yeah dated based on the original there were some fixtures that were different and yep. that's it once we know what the fixture schedule is it's the I, difference between three and 700 so 400 I, bucks i have that on the uh, on the application that i emailed to jeff i believe yep okay all right good so is it so all you need is a check for the difference and correct yep um, is there an actual paper permit that I would end up having, or is it not necessary for anything? Do they, uh, I don't, do they actually post an actual paper permit when we send that back for, to them? For buildings, not necessarily for sewer. It's intent uh, to connect and then the listing, and then it stays with the property. Okay. All right. All right. So it just would be coordinating my contractor with the sewer treatment plant operator and anything that needs to go through highway. Yep. yep. So okay. those, those are your two points of contact. Okay. Great. We look forward to seeing a brand spanking new building back there. <laughs> We're hoping. <laughs> there you go. It's been a long haul. You're doing great work though. It's definitely been a journey. I suppose we have to take an official vote on that though, right? Now that I think about it. Yeah. Uh, we have motion, a motion to grant uh, with a adjusted permit fee of $400 uh, for uh, the Atlantic connection as is in the drawing and following the schematic also the invert that the uh, waste treatment plant operator, chief engineer, Rich Brendan approved. Okay, good. There was a question about, I think, the downpipe versus, anyway, whatever Rich's note is on there, just make sure to follow it and we'll be okay. Did he did he add a note to the plan that I sent? I think in the email about the downpipe, if I'm not mistaken, but we can double check that. Okay. Meaning entering the manway and then having a 90. Right, I, I did... In, yeah, I did drop a, a cross-section view of what the proposed connection would be yep. with a downpipe going all the way into the invert with a little short stub to direct yep. flow yep. into directly into the flow in the bottom of the manhole. Yep. We'll just, yep. Okay. just make sure to catch up with uh, Rich, Rich if he had comment on that. I seem to remember that in an email, but either okay. way, we'll make sure it follows the, your drawing and, and his recommendation. Okay. Great. Thanks all so right. much. Thanks. Thanks. Have Thank a good you. night. You too. All, right. All those Great. in favor of the permit as noted? Aye. Aye. All right.
two to zero on that. I think uh, we might be able to squeeze. Do you think we have enough time, Wendy, to squeeze you in for our discussion on, on authorization for early voting? I think so. I think it's pretty cut and dry. All right, cool. So um, the legislator has just enacted uh, extension um, for voting if we were going to do that. We're not going to do that. But within there, um, we are allowed to have early voting if we choose. So between the election official and the select board, uh, we can have early voting. I am all on board for that. I think that voters are finding that to be an easier way during COVID to come into the office with not so many people. So I would recommend doing it nine to five on Monday. It's the week before, I think it's the 29th, Tuesday and Wednesday from nine to four and Thursday and Friday from nine to noon. Um, looks like the town hall dropped out. I think, oh, is that what that is? Yeah, they've all, they're all gone. Oh, all right. Well, what does everybody else think? <laughs> Early voting? <laughs> no. I love early voting. I'm all for it. <laughs> right. Oh, hey. Scott's back. Oh, here he's back now. Hey, now. Yeah. I'm not sure where I lost you, but it's a. Uh, if the board feels that early voting would be there beneficial to our voters, then I I recommend that they vote the early voting for the annual election. And what methods, town clerk? Excuse me? What what methods? Ballot, drop box? It, it would be- it, In the, person? The early voting part would be the drop box, which okay. would be allowed. It's the in-person voting the week of. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and I don't that. know, were you on when I did the hours? No, okay. Would you be able to just like, oh, there we yeah. go. Thanks, How about Jeff. that? Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Appreciate that. So you're proposing Monday, Tuesday, Monday nine to five, Tuesday nine to four, Wednesday nine to four, Thursday nine to 12, Friday nine to 12. Then of course the election is Saturday. Yes. And the election is at the library? At the library from eight to one. Eight to one. Okay. Okay, David, any concerns? This is very similar to what was transpired in November. Right. Yep, I think so, yeah. And I, I think it'll be good for folks, especially, you know, we're, we're still not out of the, the pandemic yet and everything. So I think that's probably a, a good idea. It sounds like it's a busy good, week yeah. for the town clerk. Yes, it does. Choices, but that's what we like. We love giving everybody a choice they're comfortable with. Yep, uh, that would be good. And it seemed to work out great the last time, so. Okay. All right. Wendy, any extra staff required? Any volunteers? Any appointees? Uh, right now, no, because we're still in that November. The election officials' um, appointment date is September 1st to August 31st. So we're still good with everybody that was appointed last last year and I do try to keep staffing down during COVID so that yeah. we're not quite exposing people. You know, it's, it's a very short, quick ballot that will shortly be online for people to, to see, but it's not gonna take long to vote. But we are 
concerned with the 15 minutes, you know, making sure that yep. people are, are moving along that are coming in person, so. Okay. So that's an early reminder for people who want to look at the ballot, they can do it once it's finalized online, town website. Yeah, and I believe by tomorrow afternoon, I should have that on there. Okay, okay. all right, that's good. So folks can get an yeah. early- and, Yeah, the early voting ball, uh, application is already online. Okay, oh, excellent. <clears throat> so they can do it by mail, they can come in my office, or they can go and vote. Oh, that'd be great. But but I would plan ahead if they want to do it by mail. It, you know, the mail right. the mail was a sticking point through uh, September and November. So I I think if if mail is the way that people want to go, they need they need to do it soon. Yeah, just leave yourself a little extra time just to be safe. Yep. All right. Okay. Great. So uh, move to authorize early voting here at School Street. Um, Monday, April 26th, 9 to 5, Tuesday, 27th, 9 to 4, Wednesday, the 28th, 9 to 4, Thursday, the 29th, 9 to 12, and Friday, the 30th, 9 to 12. And of course, the drop box will be out here in the back. Correct, Town Clerk? Yes, thanks, Scott. Yep. Right where it is, if you happen to use it for uh, the presidential elections, if folks remember, that's where it was. So, all right. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor of the early the recommendation for early voting times? Aye. Aye. All right. Two to I zero. saw you raise your hand. Thank you um, so much. Town clerk <laughs> raised her hand too. She said, I, she I, can I, change. I well, that's all right. It was just a habit. Stop the video and the mute me. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for coming. Um, <clears throat> thanks for coming on, Wendy. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. You, you too. All right, and I think, oh, look at that. We're actually right on time and on schedule. Uh, so our next discussion will be a, an update on our Riverside Park. Um, and I see we've got a number of folks here. So um, maybe I'll turn it over to, I guess, I think Carlos probably, or Jeff, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna give a, a brief introduction. Um, we the the town had authorized the application for a park grant for riverside park um at, at annual town meeting last year um we submitted our application i think it was in july um and we were approved and we had a um i guess to back up a little bit uh at the same town meeting the uh, library had applied for CPA funds for a um, kayak kiosk and uh, sort of shade structure um, and sheds to replace the recreation shed and the Sunderland Youth Baseball Shed. And that was also approved at annual town meeting. That's sort of the, the town match. And then we had applied for park funds to um, renovate the restrooms to make them ADA accessible um and, and improvements there um to create a an accessible walkway down the boat ramp um so that it would be fully accessible um and also uh i think the third major component of the grant was um to dig a well and install a pump for an irrigation system for the fields okay um so i just wanted to you know i think the the total um, estimation of probable cost was about 280,000, 278,000, I think. Um, and we, we received the park grant. Um, sorry, people are joining and I'm trying to keep no, it's okay. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so th this is, you know, we've engaged the architects, um, uh, Naomi Darling Architecture, Naomi and Ray are here, um, Carlos Nieto from Berkshire Design Group for the landscape architect. And so we just wanted to um, basically introduce where we are with the project. And I guess it would be helpful to give a little timeline. 
Um, we're in the design phase, which goes up through June 30th of this year, but we really need to get the designs in to be approved um, from the park program. So that's what we're working towards now. And then construction phase is basically fiscal year 22 from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, um, 2022. That's the, the last time we can spend state money on this. So that's sort of the, the big overall picture. And then, um, yeah, I'll get handed over to Carlos um, to talk about sort of the, the landscaping and design elements of the horizontal construction. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so good. good evening. Um, so well, actually, let me, I stopped sharing this, but let me bring you back to then that same screen. There we go. So as, as Jeff was mentioning, you know, we have a horizontal aspect to the project, which includes the kayak sheds and the bathroom facility and the new shed uh, for the park and rec. And then there are several other items that are happening that are we call horizontal work, which is more um, landscape work. Um, and that includes the new ADA uh, trail um, and sidewalk basically to connect to the trail. Um, and that also will include the uh, a well uh, and pump for irrigation, also includes some uh, new uh, walkways to connect to the new sheds that are going to be built, both the kayak and the, um, um, the park and rec shed, and also a new connection to the bathroom facility um, to improve the ADA. Um, last but not least, there's also, we were planning on planting um, several trees and creating basically two to new um, kind of picnic areas on the corners. So update on, on the project, um, on the site part of the project. Um, first of all, I quickly, I will talk about the, the well um, at this point to be able to uh, figure out what type of well we needed. We first needed to actually design the irrigation system. So that was the first step that we took. We designed the irrigation system that gave us the, the what requirements we needed for gallons per minute, the flow of the well and everything else. We've taken that information. And at this point, we've I've contacted uh, one well company that I've worked with that has done irrigation uh, systems for us before. And he said, we're in the process of them evaluating the site and giving us a quote uh, just to get a sense of I have a sense of how much it is, but I want to get a, a more current sense of how much it is. Uh, we just did a well like that a year ago for Hawkins Academy. Um, it was right at the beginning of COVID. So it was a little bit different type of situation. So we want to make sure that we, we know where we're at with the, with the well. Um, also the wells tend to be in um, our, 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 there's no certainty really until you start digging a well. <laughs> so um, we want to get the, the firm that I've been talking to. They're from Chesterfield. They they know the area, and um, so I, that's why we want them to to get get their opinion on what they think. Um, but th that's the process with the well. So we've uh, designed the irrigation system so we could kind of back engineer back so that we could know how much water we really needed for the system so we can then. Um, Ask for a well company to come in and, and or three well companies to give us some some quotes for this. Um, the other part uh, of the horizontal work that we are right now working on is on, on the new ADA sidewalk and retaining wall uh, for um, connecting uh, School Street uh, in a pedestrian, uh, you know, along the boat ramp to the uh, to the uh, riverfront or riverside trail. And in that process, the uh, first part of, of what we've been doing, uh, first of all, was actually closing out the permit, the NOI, uh, the original NOI permit. So we needed to request our certificate of compliance and go through that process. So we, we've done that um, so that we, we can now move forward with the, uh, the new, this new part of the project um, because that will include an, a, a, a another permit from Conservation Commission. So we needed to close the original permit so that now we can move forward and, and, and do this new permit. New one. Okay. Um, the other part that we I've been working on is um, the the actual you know plan sets that we need for the NOI application, and that will you know in that process we're we basically doing seventy five percent of the design at that point. Um, so some news on that is that we originally um, I'm going through some uh, this is the existing conditions. 
And just to make sure everybody uh, understands why we have to go through CONCOM and ask for permits, we have uh, the mean high water line, which is the riverfront um, or the edge of the river. And that creates uh, two areas, the 100 foot uh, riverfront area and the 200. So, and those are regulated areas under conservation commission. In addition to that, this uh, dashed line that I'm here following with my cursor also is the FEMA 100 year flood elevation. Um, which then, because we're doing some work within that area, like we did before, we also have to pull uh, Conservation Commission permits for that. Um, so it, for us to ask for a Conservation Commission permit, we need to kind of get the design to a place where we can do most of the engineering so that we can submit for this permit. So what you're seeing here is the existing conditions plans that we've been putting together. And then this is the construction documents at, at this point. Um, We've, we're proposing a, a sidewalk that basically goes along the, um, the boat ramp uh, drive and connects back to the um, Riverside Trail. Um, to do that, um, and, and I'm gonna go quickly through this because there's been a change on this and, and for good, but um, <clears throat> to allow to do this walkway, we were gonna be doing a retaining wall that was gonna connect with the existing retaining wall that we did for phase one, because it's a steep slope and we need to cut that slope so we can have a level um, uh, walkway. Something that um, as we've been coordinating also with uh, Fish and Wildlife, which is the people who, who, who did the improvements to the, uh, did the improvements to the uh, boat ramp and the new gate that we've seen here and everything else. Um, we went out with, uh, again, with the representative of Fish and Wildlife and I was having some issues with the gate. It was kind of in the way. Um, and immediately he said, hey, why, why didn't you put the, the walkway on the opposite side of the um, <laughs> boat ramp uh, drive? And we had assumed from the beginning that they did not want us to be on the downslope of, of, their, of their drive. But after having a good conversation with them, it ended up being that he had no issue with that um, being on the downside. A downslope side of the uh, drive. So what that means, and I'm going to jump to my next drawing, is that now instead of having a walkway on the, if you're going down the boat ramp on the right side, it actually will be on the left side of the boat ramp. Mm -hmm. And what that will allow us to do is to not have the retaining wall that we used to, that we were showing. So a massive retaining wall that we needed or massive, but not massive, but long. So it's going to be about 30 feet high, but fairly long. Um, it also allows us to have uh, uh, a more shallow slope at the beginning of the uh, actual walkway. Sure. Um, when it was on the opposite side, it was really, it, it was just steeper because it's the inside of a curve and that becomes steeper, but the outside is actually shallower. So it's easier for us to put that walkway there. Um, and last but not least, um, and it's hard to see here, but I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to put a photograph. Um, we have a gate right now that before we were gonna to have to remove and move and do a lot of things to make it work. Um, now we're leaving the existing gate. And when we, we mean a gate, um, also it's the cost of that gate, which is, it's a brand new gate and it's also a, a pretty expensive gate. <laughs> so we didn't, wanna, um, we didn't wanna spend any money on a new gate that's been recently installed. Uh, so with this solution being on the left side of the, of the um, boat ramp drive, now we can actually allow to have the existing uh, gate to function um, as it already does um, by creating, leaving a space for the, uh, the gate anchor, which is at the other end. And this is our gate uh, swivel or the uh, hinge side. Um, so uh, basically it's solved a lot of problems for us. So um, at this point we are, we were planning to having, having all my plans for NOI uh, ready last week on uh, Friday, but this change has pushed us a little bit. Um, so now we're gonna definitely have plans, but by the end of this week. Um, so we are moving along with it and the change did, did throw a little bit of a curveball for us. But um, on the other hand, I think we're we're in good shape and we can have those plans uh, ready by the end of the week, uh, so which keeps us have, in, this, in our schedule. You should have less site impact with this change. Yeah, that's exactly the same. I mean, again, there was, we had had talks really, really early on and with Fish and Wildlife and ADAPT, those talks, they, which was before this project really developed. Um, my understanding was that they didn't really want to, you know, wanted us to be on the left side, um, on this downslope. 
But um, but yeah, no, uh, after being on site, uh, Jeff, uh, myself and Terrence from uh, Terry from uh, Fish and Wildlife went out to the site, just did some measurements out there and it all made sense. Um, so it, I think it's going to be a better, it's better. Sometimes when we, you get three heads, three heads there, <laughs> we can find a better solution than just uh, going with the assumptions. So. And it'll be a lot better for people in wheelchairs and everything too. So it's kind of a win-win all around. Yep. Uh, the only, you know, again, one, one in the original design, you know, when we were on the other side, one advantage that I had, it was that there was a direct connection, but this has no real traffic. This is a boat ramp, a drive. It's not a road. So now we, we're going to have to have a cross, you know, you're going to have to cross right here. But again, it's, uh, that's, I think the only uh, a con out of the, the change. I think every, all the pros uh, outweigh the fact that we're going to do a, a quick um, um, uh, crossing right there. And it's in an area that there's no traffic. Um, there's nice views or, or sight lines at that point because it's after the curve. So as you're coming down, you can actually see if somebody's actually crossing. It's not like it's gonna be a surprise. Um, Carlos? Yep. I, I do think that um, when you're coming from the um, walk, to cross there, you you're it's going to be hard to see down the boat ramp. Um, and I, I'm just a little I'm a little concerned I, about the crossing because I don't there is quite a lot of um, usage of the boat ramp and especially on the weekends um, uh, um, there's there's a fair amount of traffic going in and out. So I I think we need some kind of safety feature to um, make that crossing safe down there. Yep, I, so my uh, a proposal was to put another sign, basically just putting a, a crosswalk sign um, mm -hmm. right, right at the corner there so that when you're coming down or uh, you can see it. And then um, we will have definitely have some paintings, but uh, light stripings on the, on the actual ground so that there is uh, an actual crosswalk there. Um, but we can definitely discuss any other, you know, any other methods uh, to try to make that uh, more more visible, uh, for sure. Yeah, just because I, you know, heard from pedestrians that don't feel safe on there, and um, also heard from people who live on School Street saying that the um, the um, the cars speed. So, and I don't think they can speed that much at that point, but still, it's just it's a it's a it is a sensitive area. Yep. I think. It'll, it also will have obviously a, a uh, the same way that we have on the opposite side. It'll, it'll have a tactile strip or a, uh, uh, the truncated domes. Uh, it's a, a, a safety feature so that when you are walking and if you are disabled, you uh, have uh, hard to sight or something, you, you will feel it on the ground. We have that on the other side of the crosswalk, yeah. so it, it'll identify people also when they're walking there. But again, we will we can definitely discuss. I think a you know a sign um, will definitely help for people to understand that there's going to be people walking there. Oh. Yeah, that's it's the cars I'm that I feel like need to be mm -hmm. aware. Oh, yeah. Carlos, so, is there a reason is there a reason that the crosswalks are hard 90 degrees and not just diagonal other than obviously more space? And just to give it a little bit more space, but but we could do definitely diagonal um, if we needed to and just uh, bring it back a little bit higher. Not just just it's my inner right my inner right brain thinking right there <laughs> no no and and one of the reasons also i mean we need to create a flat area so we need it to go all the way down to that spot where it's flatter so that there is you can turn um what we call a landing yes. so that there is when the person in the wheelchair is coming down then there is a flat area where you can actually turn and then do your crosswalk so you're not in a steep slope as you're trying to cross um, so that's one of the reasons why we brought it down that way, but we can, we can definitely look into uh, what other methods we could do so that it's more visible. I, I still think that the pros of having it on, on this side um, and compared to having it on the other side, I, I think it's better to try to find a solution um, to the crosswalk, you know, getting again, more signage, making sure that it's painted, having the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, truncated domes, the uh, sense, the sense, uh, the pad of the uh, on your feet, right. so that you can feel that there's a crosswalk. Um, and we'll 
we can entertain something else too. Um, I, um, and the traffic down here, I think it's, you know, I, I understand that people have a perception of the traffic being fast, but I think by the time you get here, it's, it, this is a 15 foot wide drive. Right. Um, and somebody coming down with a truck or, a, a, or if there is a sign, I mean, I, I, I imagine that if they see a, a crosswalk there, um, you know, they, they'll, they'll slow down. There was a note that came in from John asking if that crosswalk could be raised in such a way to act as a speed hump. My, my only concern with raising it as a speed hump is that there is drainage coming down this whole thing. Oh, good point. Um, you know, we have drainage both coming uh, straight out and then also to the, to the side, longitudinal, you know, to the side of the, of the slope here. So we can definitely think about it, but we need to put a lot of um, thought because if you put something high here, this is at oh, wow. some level, a certain level and we can't change this and if we put this high the water is going to hit this and then it's going to go somewhere yeah to me that's the answer all by itself so yeah think about it as item number 400 in your top 10 <laughs> <laughs> no but but it is it it, it is a yeah what, what good idea and and some applications it works really well but but when you have really drainage going through it's 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 a little bit harder yep. um so I mean, that, so, and that's where we are at with uh, the site um, part of this. I, I think our, our current goal is to finalize these plans so we can get the NOI and we can move that process along because it does take, you know, uh, uh, some time to review and then go through the whole process. So, um, so our, again, our goal is to try to uh, tidy this plan up as, as much as possible and be able to be, uh, by the end of this week, uh, ready for uh, submitting for it for the notice of intent. I and just then, wanted to add, can I yeah. add, Carlos, that um, the town has also applied for funding to implement that irrigation system in the soccer field oh. so we can do it Great. all all of this project in one fell swoop that Great. soccer field's been waiting a long time for attention oh that's awesome that is awesome wasn't aware of that of course once it's irrigated it'll have to be mowed more <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's, a, there's the irony there right <laughs> yeah yeah good, yeah yeah one of the good things is that obviously when these irrigation systems have um, rain sensors and um, so, you know, when you have moisture, they're not running, you know, it, it, so you, you're preserving the amount of water. So, so the idea is to have an even growth, right? Um, more even growth and, and then having spikes of a lot of water for, you know, natural rain. And then all of a sudden having dry spells, which wreaks havoc with, with turf and, and lawns, as everybody knows. In their own house so but yeah right. you, you it, 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 when i used to do landscaping um that was the the you know the 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 way you kept your your job when i was a landscaper <laughs> um was to you know you had a good irrigation and, and a good fertilization program for your turf yeah. and then you also had the maintenance <laughs> behind that so go. it is true the more you feed it the more it grows um but, um, so again, on, on the site part of this, um, on, on my end, on the design, you know, my priority is to push these uh, drawings um, so we can get construct, you know, 75% construction documents, we can go through conservation commission. Uh, and then once we get through that um, and we have some more coordination now with, and we'll, I think there's a good segue, which will lead to the uh, other buildings. Um, once the buildings are a little bit more, the design, uh, of what's going to happen there, it's a little bit more tight. Then we'll we'll start working on those connections, the the walkway connections to go to each one of the buildings. And um, Jeff, I think if I if unless there's any questions or any any other comments or anything, I would leave it to you and I guess go into the architectural side of things. Okay. Any questions for Carlos at all? Or thanks, Carlos. Right. Thanks, I really appreciate it. No problem. Let me end my screen share so we can stop hugging the, there we go. Turning it over to Naomi now or? Yeah. Sure. Hi everybody. Um, I'm gonna share our presentation. Um, actually, 
Hmm. Is there, let's see. Maybe scoot it to that way a little bit. How's that? There you go. Good. Okay, so hello everybody. So as, as Jeff mentioned, uh, Ray and I have been working uh, with Catherine uh, at the library on a kayak kiosk and soccer shed uh, that I think maybe you have all seen. And then we've just started working uh, with the town on a bathroom renovation. And so we're just going to run through the package uh, as it currently stands. One of the things we're really trying to do is to tie all of the uh, built projects together. So it really feels like a cohesive um, park and everything, you know, speaks the same architectural language and it looks like they belong together. And so, you know, this is a perspectival view and you can see, you know, as you're coming up the path from the parking lot by the library, you really will be able to see all of these sort of as a family. The first one here on the left is the picnic pavilion, uh, kayak kiosk and storage shed. Um, the storage really is gonna accommodate the exact, the same things that are currently being accommodated in the shed structure that's there. So, um, you know, storage on one side and then storage for youth, youth, youth baseball. And then you can see, you know, there's three sort of benches here where the kayaks will go and then uh, picnic benches to the right at the rear, we're looking at the renovated bathroom, keeping the exact same footprint and really keeping the structure of what's existing, but recladding it and reworking the interior for ADA. And then in the back behind the batting cages is um, the storage shed uh, for soccer. And so in addition to working with Catherine, you know, we also worked with Jim uh, Ewan and with Mark. And so they both had input through the process, you know, in the design of those two structures. So we're just gonna run through the kayak kiosk first, then the soccer shed, and then the bathrooms uh, where they're at now. So this is sort of a close up of the kayak kiosk. Again, you can see the kayaks being stored here. These are, they double as benches and then there's a picnic, picnicking areas. We've got a sliding barn door here and that's storage for life jackets and paddles. Um, and then you can see it's sort of exposed uh, timber, exposed framing um, with sort of a screening. And these are, this is sort of an architectural language that we're using in all three of the structures um, in the park. So he, oh, here again, this is the three. I should have done that first. So this is, you know, this is the, the storage for like the lawnmower. And then this is a youth baseball storage. This is the, ki the kayak. Uh, life jackets and whatnot. Um, here's uh, just a sectional perspectives to give you a bit of a, a sense of what that looks like. And then some elevations. And then um, this is the soccer shed. Um, and you know, it's very, very similar, just much smaller. We don't have the big cantilever. So it's a much simpler structure, but all the same materials and pretty much the same detailing. Um, and one just open space um, with a sliding barn door for, you know, getting the soccer nets and stuff in, smaller door for, you know, person access and ball bags and uh, cones and whatnot. And then you can just see the the one the one room that's Jim right there. <laughs> Great likeness. I don't know where you got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know some elevations, um, and then and then this is the bathroom, and Ray's going to take over here. Yeah, well. just to uh, give you the current status on the kiosk, kayak kiosk, we're we're at about ninety five percent of construction documents 
And uh, now that we've contracted with the structural engineer for a review of the kayak kiosk, that's, that's uh, something we'll be doing over the next few weeks. Um, so anyway, here's the, the bathroom structure. So this should look fairly familiar because it's mostly the existing structure, but what we're doing is removing, as Naomi said, the existing cladding. Um, we were able to determine that uh, with the help of the inspector that the structure for the most part is sound in the existing building, um, but we will be pulling out uh, all the existing plumbing fixtures and reconfiguring the space so that we can have uh, ADA units um, as you can see here, I think we, we we worked it out that it looks like we can get actually four separate toilet rooms, and then these will be uh, gender neutral. Uh, the two are ADA accessible. The others are, as you can see, are, are very compact, um, non-ADA toilet rooms. Uh, so what we'd be doing with that is making new openings on sort of normally the north north side. Uh, towards facing the soccer fields with a new walkway on that side uh, with uh, doors pretty much located where the existing small windows are. So those uh, on that end are, uh, again, the non-ADA bathrooms. On the other end, the, you're going in with uh, two bathrooms that have the toilets, the sinks, and urinals, if, if that's what you want in, in both of them. And then over on the left there, left side uh, near the tree is a drinking fountain and bottle filler, uh, which we will be plumbing as a, as a new item. Uh, and then the existing screens, which are pretty deteriorated, we're proposing to uh, replace those and um, do introduce a little bit of framing that's similar to the kayak kiosk. So you can see there, yeah, and Naomi's pointing the sort of uh, just framing in a little bit to the overhang extensions and then coming out to a kind of screen wall. So those might be framed in something like cedar uh, to add a little, you know, nice touch for privacy uh, to those areas. And also the vent at, towards the top of the peak, the gable, you can see we're, we're replacing the proposing to replace the deteriorated uh, little vent openings with a kind of flatted vent, a new vent opening up there. It's very, would be very easy to kind of reframe that. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, difficulty in introducing that. And, and also adding a little bit of a, we'll probably be resheathing the roof so we can extend them a little further uh, beyond their existing condition to sort of protect the building a little bit more. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, we are a little. You know, that tree is very close to the building. It's sort of bumping up against the side of the foundation a little bit, but so far it hasn't caused any heaving, or as we can tell. But uh, we were hoping that we can take a very close look with Carlos in terms of, uh, you know, making sure that that if that tree will be maintained, that it is maintained in good health. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, there's a possibility of more than likely just doing some root pruning mm -hmm. as part of the kind of the, the, the walkway uh, part of the project. And, um, and there are some products that you can use that are basically, um, it guides the new roots that are gonna grow so that they don't keep growing to that side. So mm -hmm. they're, they're like panels, basically uh -huh. HTP panels. Yep, yep, yep. They're, they're, they basically, you, you cut the roots in a, narrow trench and then you put those panels in and that prevents again the roots to coming back to that side so more than likely that's what we will be doing with the treatment for the tree so carlos you don't see any issues with i think it was especially like the footing at this upper co corner here closest to the tree that we were maybe a little concerned about you don't foresee any issues with that i mean you put you put me in the spot i have to go out there and take a look and it, because I ha I did not when when we went out there the first time we or the se first and second time I didn't pay it close attention to the roots yeah. to that corner, um, but more than likely, root pruning and cleaning it out. And what you're pointing out right now, just uh, that's uh, not the edge of the foundation of the building, but it's more the edge of the new walkway that you're yeah, proposing. Exa exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we actually can pull the uh, a new 
the post footing a little bit to the right if we need to, because it doesn't actually have to go right at the corner. Yeah. Again, I that, with some wood pruning. Yeah, it, we, we'll definitely take a, a a much closer look onto that cor corner right there. Um, but again, more than likely, this is a little silver maple. Um, they're very hardy. Uh, they're very brittle, and they lose a lot of branches. Um, but they're very hardy, and I think if we did some root pruning, um, I, I think it'll it'll be okay. But but we'll we'll definitely take a, a closer look at that corner. Carlos, what's the caliper and canopy on that tree as it stands? Oh man, I would say it's like an 18 inch to 24 inch caliper, I would say for okay. that okay. from the top of my head. And I would say the canopy okay. is good 30 feet to okay. 40 feet. So that would that would leave an impact. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's you know, the tree, that tree, unfortunately, it's not the best type of tree. Uh, it's you know, it's kind of a it's a, a weed maple, <laughs> so wow. a little silver maple. And you'll see that it was, it, at some point it broke and then it really branched up and that's why it's really like really full of leaves in it. Um, that's, I'm gonna say that's the cons, the pros is that it's the only shade we have in that area. Now we're gonna have this new shade, more shade structure for the kayaks. And I think that's gonna be a great addition. Um, but that's why we're trying to save it as much as possible. Yeah, I was gonna ask the, the, the the obvious question, if it's, if it's worth your, if it's, if you had your druthers, would you out it and put something else there? Uh, yeah, if, if, if it was my, if, if it was my, <laughs> but the only other thing is this, and, and this is something that I explain to everybody in parks, um, when we're designing parks, yes, I would remove it and then we would replace it. But to get what we have right now would take, yeah. you know, 20, 30 years minimum to get a tree to be that size again. Um, so Inst to get the instant effect we have right now, you would need to have some type of canopy or something. So right. that's the pro, again, the pros and the cons on this. Um, sometimes it's better to save it so that we can have that little bit of shade and and not have to, because if we did eliminate it, it's going to take a while to really have a, you know, we won't see it in our, you know, I won't see it in a while. <laughs> 25 years at least until you get, get a tree that's that size. Thanks. Okay. One, one of the things that we're starting to do now is, you know, s specify and really accessories. So, you know, do we want, um, how is the space going to be maintained? What kind of soap dispensers do we want? Do we want paper towels or, you know, hot air dryers? And so if anyone have, has any specific feedback or comments on that, that would be helpful. And we will be meeting in a smaller group, I think, next week or maybe later this week. But if anyone here has specific comments on that, um, we'd be happy to, you know, hear any perspectives that you have. Um, hi, my name is Inky. I'm part of the Pathways Committee. I would just, uh, on that note, would love to advocate for the use of uh, non-paper towel and like the smart water uh, valve system for urinals and, and toilets. I'm sure there's better language for that. And, you could probably look it up, but yeah, I vote for uh, no paper uh, air dryers that are smart and fast and, and less water usage, please. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, specifying low, low water use fixtures. And uh, yeah, I mean, this, these are some of the decisions we'll present towards uh, or choices we'll present to the working group. But, you know, uh, I mean, waterless urinals is a possibility. There's also very low, like eighth, eighth gallon flush urinals and things like that. So each one has its own various implications, but I think, uh, you know, we're definitely supportive of less water use if possible. Um, yeah, I mean, the paper versus hand air blower, you know, there's, you know, various things to consider in terms of like, you know, do people need some paper to wipe off something off their shoe or something? So do you do both or just one or, you know, but that that's in a way part of a town discussion and, and we can make our recommendations, but we really, you know, want you all to, 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 to think about it a lot and then we can all make a decision on that. Thank you. I wanted to um, ask you all if you had, uh, if part as part of the plan, 
it had been figured out where that pile of baseball, the, I don't know what you call it, but the, the, the pile of dirt that baseball uses, that's going to need to move. And has that been cited in an aesthetic way? <laughs> well, yeah, Mark, I, I don't think Mark was able to be on tonight. Um, and I, I don't have an answer for that. It's, it's, in, it's infield material, and they need to replenish the infield from time to right. time with material. So it needs to be um, it, it will need to be relocated in order to do this, obviously. Um, we'll have to have that discussion more with, uh, with Mark and with baseball. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that's, uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that he and Sunderland Youth Baseball are very well aware of that. <laughs> and we will have to try to come up with a good solution. Okay. Are you envisioning a really tiny little salt dome for infield, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I think there is room on that side still. I mean, we've slid, it's, it is more slid over from the original shed there, right. but, but it seems like there's a, you know, just eyeballing it, a fair amount of room on that side. So hopefully we can do that. Another thing I wanted to just mention to everyone is that, that there is, depending on how the bidding comes out, we, we did put, money in the grant for a new sign at the front of, at the parking lot the entrance to the parking lot um uh, so that uh that's that should get included in the bid document and lauren we should talk about where the design is at for that uh, signage yeah, we had we, the, the the signs really got us last time, so we're gonna do it better this time. <laughs> Is the signage just for the park as a whole, or for specific instructions about where to go for what? Or well, that the, this the sign will be at the entrance of the parking lot. It'll be it'll be for the whole that whole public complex. So um, you know. Um, but it's not going to be informational, be more directional. Mm -hmm. Well, the feel of it's wonderful. I think uh, the work is uh, top notch and I look forward to seeing it implemented. Well, thank, yep. you. So thank you. It's such a nice uh, addition to the area. Thank you. Hold on one second. I think we got a question there from Rock. Hold on one second. Um, the question is, uh, the free loaner kayaks that train has probably left the station, but I've heard a kayak rental visit is coming to downtown in April. Nothing to do with this Delta. SPLs will complete with the bid, will compete with the biz, and perhaps more interest to Sunderland funding is the backing away from the Sunderland Public Library plan with free funding for other park desires. And just uh, I think Rock was just passing that along, just as a comment there. <clears throat> so um, does the library end up competing with a private company doing the same business? I think is what if it yeah. boiled it down. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily think that we would compete with them. It's just three kayaks that we could potentially loan out to people. Um, whereas this business that I think could offer a lot more than what the library can. Um, sure. Just say we're supplementing a service for folks who, who can't necessarily pay. To, Got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Catherine. <clears throat> All right, does anybody have any other um, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Well, somebody has a question about the roof pitch being low. I think it's probably a little higher than the way it looks there. Somebody was concerned about somebody climbing on the roof. I mean, <laughs> and, you know. and snow loading. Don't bear that in mind. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. It's been engineered for snow load. Um, yeah, we, uh, you know, the roof starts at about eight feet. So it is a, uh, you know, an enterprising child, I suppose, on some. Several children could <laughs> try. <laughs> could <do it. laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if you've had any children crawling on the roof now. <laughs> but, 
uh, it's uh, not much of a different situation. So not, not for many, many, many years have we yeah. had. I mean, <laughs> that's that's good. Let's hope that stays that way, right? <laughs> um, what was the material in the roof? I can't can't really tell from the drawing. Did you have an yeah. idea about the material? Yeah, we're we're proposing that it would be a, a, a low slope standing seam metal metal. Makes okay, good. Sense. Yeah, the snow will slide off that. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, great. And then the hope really would be to match. You know, all of the roofs would be that same. Um, right metal and then same with you know the the wood slatting would be you know echoed in the bathroom similar to what we have in the kayak kiosk and then the siding when we reclad the bathroom would sort of match the storage you know for both the kayak and for the soccer shed right common design element usage and everything to so the whole project yep that's excellent all right great is the color um is that paint is it painted or is it a natural wood I can't, on, on the, the solid sides of the building. You know, it's it's sort of rendered somewhat ambiguously. I think we'll have to figure that out um, in terms of, to, you know, upfront costs, maintenance costs. You know, ideally we'd, we're thinking of cedar for like the slatting and screening. And so we want some, you know, either cedar or something that looks like cedar. Um, yeah. So that it really feels, you know, like a cohesive project. So that yeah, could can... that could range from things like a so you know actual shiplap cedar or to like something like smart side, which is more of like a composite siding Material. that is pre-slatted and you know look looks fairly decent. But you know, again, as we kind of hone in on the the budget figures that that will become clear. <laughs> yeah, oh, and maintenance is always a factor too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, always trying to find that delicate balance between beauty and maintenance. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> constant challenge. <clears throat> there you go. All right, well, thanks. We really appreciate everybody's time and your presentations and everything. And thanks for coming Great. tonight and giving yeah. us an update. Thank you so much. Thank Great. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, thanks. All right. Um, we'll just give them a second to clear out. And our next update is, I don't know if Gloria is still with us, our COVID-19 update. I don't know if she, I, there she is. How are you? Very patient. <laughs> yes, I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. Um, the numbers are looking much better um, for the past two week period. I think um, for the next report that comes out, we'll be around 10. Uh, so that's much better news. The last time I had an update um, from Caitlin said the pooled testing has all been negative and that's really good to hear. Nice. Good. That's good. Yep. All right, excellent. Yep, definitely. Um, Want to be a reminder that there's a discussion panel tomorrow evening about getting the vaccine and what the pros are of getting that vaccine. Notice I didn't say any cons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a flyer up on the town website to uh, numbers you can dial in to listen for okay. that. All right. Thank you. Yep. Yep, little there, there Go ahead, David. No, that's all. I was just going to say more. We're starting to hear more and more info about you know vaccine availability and things like that. So um, it ties in with what my question was. Are there any more scheduled Franklin County? Um, or do we just go to the state website? Wendy's waving. Wendy's waving. waving. Yep, she yes. is. <laughs> I just heard from Carolyn Ness today that Treehouse is going to get six hundred doses of Johnson and Johnson on Thursday. So okay. a clinic on Thursday. Um, and I have to say, our Sunderland volunteers are just awesome. I've they heard a lot it, of good things, yep. Yeah, they, I mean, 16 volunteers and it was filled up immediately. Nice, uh, So we have a great, a great group of volunteers that are there. And obviously not everybody can do specific days and times, but um, 
and that's why we have so many. So I, I think um, it's commendable. I, I just think Sunderland has just done such a great job with, with volunteering at the clinics. Well, I would agree. That's awesome. Absolutely. So stay tuned for that, updates on that then. And how does someone find out about available slots for a Thursday visit? You know, the, the COG has something on there, but I have to say our triad group yep. uh, does a really good job of getting uh, appointments for people. Nice. And um, Sharon for sure, they can call 665-3017. And she will hook them up with either Jay Yankowski or Diane Nanis. And there's a few other of them that, I, you know, they, they just seem to, to get appointments. So I, especially with this coming up, I would definitely, if people are having a hard time getting a, an appointment, I would call Sharon Pachurik at 665-3017. Uh, to have help to get the appointment. Great, thanks. And the beauty of the Johnson & Johnson is it's just one shot. That's right, a one shot one. That's yep. right. And it's exactly. real appealing to people. Some people. It is, yeah. They don't have to worry about going back and worrying about scheduling their second one and everything, so yep. that's good. And I've heard it has pretty good efficacy rates, especially against um, some of the variants out there too, so that's mm -hmm. good. Excellent. All right, Jeff. Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, the Board of Health has been working to get homebound uh, individuals vaccines delivered and um, we're able to participate in the regional homebound vaccination program run out of Amherst. There's a link on the town's COVID-19 webpage um, the latest update has the link. Um, and if people are listening and they're not comfortable with technology, they could certainly call us at 665-1441 and we can um, help them get signed up. Uh, but it's only for certain communities within the region that, that are participating. And I think there are requirements on eligibility. Um, the the, the the biggest one I heard is that you, you're homebound and eligible if you need two people to help you get out of the home. Um, but the, the questions will run through it and, and we'll make sure people are eligible. But did anybody who's listening that, that might know of somebody or are, are themselves homebound and, and still looking for a vaccination, um, just wanted to make people aware that that was a, a possibility. And I understand that um, the FERCOG has been doing homebound vaccinations as well. And so people might have already received them. If not, um, just another option for folks. I was going to ask that. So thank you. That's a, that's an, that's a, a, a tougher um, group to be able to take care of. So that's, that's good. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, right. EMD. Yep. If I could Here. just do a shameless plug. Go right ahead. The Sunderland Volunteer Firemen's Association annual Easter flower sale is Saturday. That's nice. Right. 8 a.m. till 1 or we run out of flowers. At the uh, corner store, the, the usual spot? Corner store, yep. All right, the there you spot. go. Stop okay. in, get a lottery ticket, get some flowers, whatever, a drink. Yep. Excellent. My mom has already asked. Okay, yep. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> Dear. There you go. All right. Jeff, yes. Just one other thing, since the uh, third member of the select board can't be here tonight, I, yeah. you know, I think that it's really important. I read an article today that the CDC is warning about a fourth wave of, you know, spikes. Yes. And so just reminding people that even if you are vaccinated, you know, please be careful, social distance, wear your masks. Um, you know, it, Wash your hands. We're, we're not out of the woods yet, even exactly. though people are getting vaccinated. So right. We don't want a fourth wave. Right. You know, let's let's uh, let's keep that and with all. <clears throat> if we keep up the way we're going, you know, we'll be having able to have holidays together maybe by the end of the year. So That's that would be good. I know. Keep those yep. fingers crossed. Oh, I see Wendy. Oh, oh, David, there. I just I have yeah. one more thing. 
Yeah, go for um, it. And just in case, but I think Scott has very few meetings left. And I just wanted to give a shout out of 18 years. He has been impartial. He has done a great job for, for us in our community. And I, I really did want to um, thank him and let him know I've, I've enjoyed the 18 years as select board. And then previously he was on the finance committee and I know he's staying on the cemetery, which is great, but I noticed he carefully he really slid out of the camera view. <laughs> yep, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and don't forget, don't think for a minute that that won't be going uh, unnoticed, you know. That's all I'll say at the moment, so. Thank you, Town Clerk. Very much appreciated. <clears throat> well, we're not done with them just yet, so. That's right. Fact, we Four have more have, meetings. That's right. and. If we're all done with COVID, that leads us to, a, we have a, our weekly placeholder for budget stuff. So thanks, Laurie. Have a good night. See you next yeah, week. If there's a budget update, really, it's around the meeting on Thursday where we try to nail down both new growth as well as local receipts. If I was to, if I was to say that that's the, the biggest piece out there right now, that's part of our farm. Uh, that meeting is going to be with the accountant, treasurer, collector, town administrator well, this Thursday. Some some last big inputs to the revenue side there. Yeah, it, it does clarity. Yep. Well, well, it adds it adds <laughs> guidelines. It doesn't necessarily add clarity. It gives you more information to work with. Yep, that's true. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. So this is a little, this week will be a little light on the budget, but we'll be sure to dive deeply back into it starting next week, probably once we have that information. Well, we talked so. about it. We talked about it last week, carving out a whole opera, a whole charge of the meeting to simply go right through it. And um, this week was not yep. that week. So in the next few, it certainly will be. And again, this Thursday is going to be very, very important. That's right. And without Tom, we don't want to deprive him of that. That fun either. So <laughs> he might know. be out of state for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, it looks like I'm going to be delayed another week or two. <laughs> the fishing's <laughs> looking <laughs> good. <laughs> That's right. All right. Um, now, with that, we have um, any select board updates. Do you have anything, uh, Scott? Uh, we had a meeting this morning with Jeff and the chief going over the. the uh, um, proposals in this year's annual, but triennial contract. And uh, we're going to have an executive session Monday, and uh, that will be the, our next series of meetings. So it's been three meetings. It's been like, it's been largely information exchange and, uh, it, and those, the tone and tenor is always positive. Good. Not crazy. always Productive, but yeah. positive. <laughs> That'll happen sometimes. <laughs> it does happen sometimes. It's true. All right, thanks. Um, we had our personnel committee meeting, committee meeting last week, and we finished up our some of our stuff that we'll be talking about. And um, we're still working on the um, Juneteenth items for that. So some more things to clarify around that before we make any final decisions there. <clears throat> Um, and now it's time to turn it over to Jeff for town administrator updates. The town administrator, I feel like I should have some kind of good intro for that, but you know. <laughs> and now, uh, Jeff. I, I can work with FCAT on some music. And okay, there you graphics, go. You know. A little lead in, you know. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, so work is continuing uh, along North and South Main Streets, different projects. And Silver, um, the I believe the asphalt plant opened today, and they were oh, wow. already starting <laughs> to yeah, put the I foundation that. in for the sidewalks. So that that's moving along quickly. Um, uh, somebody came in and said, "Hey, I noticed that there's some work happening on 120 North Main, and and you know the site work for that." Uh, mm -hmm. site prep is happening there too so that's exciting um, this week I'm also working on I think I 
discussed it a couple of weeks ago, but the state put together a new um, one stop for grants and infrastructure funding and uh, the application for expressions of interest, you know, no, uh, no commitments at this point, but what do you want to do is due on Friday. And so I'm working on that. And I believe the three things that we had discussed, but please correct me <laughs> before Friday, if I, if I get these wrong, um, the school street streetscape project was one yep. of them. Um, visioning for the village center was another. And then the third was uh, infrastructure improvements on Plum tree, which was um, sort of pedestrian access and, and sewer, I think. Where, yep. So, um, you know, the, we can submit up to five things. So, if you think of anything between now and Friday, you know, okay. really the state just said, give us, give us what you want to do, give us your wish list in the expression hmm. of interest, and then we'll work with you to figure out how we knock things off that. Okay. Nice. So, that's good. I see there's a little bit of abstract sculpture garden going on with a bunch of precast monoliths set up on Main, North Main. It kind of looks jaunty. If someone wants to take an art walk before they all end up in the ground. There you go. A little modern art. Uh, exactly. Mo MoMA comes to North Main. There you go. <laughs> or Mass MoCA. And then um, I, didn't, I don't know if you guys were going to mention it. So I'll uh, taxes are due April 1st, which is Thursday. Um, the, the town office building is open during the tax collector's normal business hours. Uh, there just won't be any light for you, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pay my taxes. No. <laughs> um, and then starting uh, on Monday, we're going to have limited open hours in, in the building, uh, 10 to 1, Monday through Wednesday. Um, no appointments necessary, and then by appointment uh, throughout the rest of the day during normal hours. Right. Just want to make thanks for the thanks for the update on that. <clears throat> so, Chair, we have an alternate plumbing inspector appointment tonight. Thank you for that reminder. Yes, I. <laughs> thank you. I see Tommy hanging out, wondering when the he, heck he's going to be able uh, to yeah. go. <laughs> there you go. Um, We have that yes. you can put up, Jeff. Let me see if I can find it. Um, there it is. Thanks. I almost forgot about that. Thank you. Uh, me too. I don't know that. I don't know that I can put up the application because it. I think it has That's personal right. information. Um, yep. But no, just, uh, just, he was recommended yeah, just by name, name and duration. Yep. Yeah. So um, it's Mark. Wendelowski, um, and he, I believe he's also an alternate in Deerfield, okay. uh, alternate plumbing and gas inspector. He has his licenses. He um, filled out an application, was recommended by Steve Baranowski, our, our plumbing and gas inspector. Um, okay. So uh, I believe his appointment would be now through June, June. 30th. Right? right, and then he would be re yep. reappointed. The regular appointment schedule, correct. Yeah, right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, move to appoint the alternate plumbing inspector uh, as it's been recommended. Right. I'll second. All those in favor of the alternate plumbing inspector? Aye. Aye. All right. Two to zero on that one. <clears throat> I think that exhausts our regularly scheduled <laughs> events for the evening. Um, do we have any public comments at all? And we had the good presentation and everything earlier. So that was good to see that uh, progressing along for Riverside Park and everything. And then, yeah, that was good. Yeah. And, uh, and the work, all the work starting around. I did see, I saw the, I noticed the pavement today on the way out here, Jeff. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're yeah. blacktop on their way in. Yeah. Hey, Greg. Good. Hey, Greg, go ahead. If I may, I just wanted to spread some good news. The, the state, uh, the uh, Baker administration has agreed to continue to fund the pooled testing for the elementary schools, it's uh, for the schools through the uh, the end of the school year. Oh, that's nice. good. Yeah, so just some good news. Great, that's good stuff. We, we like people coming on with good news. That doesn't happen a lot, so that's great. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. 
All right. And uh, if there's no public comments or anything else, our next meeting will be next Monday, April 5th, already into April. So it'll be budget centric. That's right. <clears throat> so if you missed out on that and was disappointed this week, we can we can make you happy next week with more numbers and charts. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we could do that. Do you, you want to um, do you want to mention that, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to yeah. say, that, uh, you know, the personnel committee had um, made a couple recommendations regarding uh, wage adjustments and and colas for non-union, non-represented employees, and, and there was a memo sent to the select for a letter from the personnel committee um, to, to that effect. Um, and then they also discussed the building commissioner salary um, and felt that there, there was significant value in, in Sunderland having an independent building commissioner. And in particular, our current building commissioner felt like he, he does a really good job um, and he, he had, uh, come before the select board and the personnel committee talking about his salary. And so the personnel committee un understood that we can't always um, give everybody everything that we want, but um, rec was making a recommendation that the select board engage with the building commissioner on a, a phased in multi-year approach to bring his salary up to that of peer communities. And so I just uh, wanted to mention that, and that that yeah. probably would be an, another discussion for executive session exactly how that looks. But um, that, that was the recommendation of the personnel committee, right, David? I don't. I, yes, no, that's, <laughs> that's what I yep. understood. Yeah, and right because we knew we couldn't bite it. It's like the the other adjustments we've been doing we can't do it all at once, so we tried to phase it in. <clears throat> all right. What's well, good news? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So if there's nothing else for this evening, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, move to adjourn. All right. I'll second. All those in favor of adjournment at uh, 8.03? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming, everybody. And thanks for participating. We'll see you next week.